In this video, we are going to talk about the DB Cooper. Before starting this video like this video. And subscribe to our channel for future updates. D.B. Cooper, also known as Dan Cooper, is a convicted felon who, in 1971, kidnapped a commercial airliner flying from Portland, Oregon, to Seattle, Washington, and then parachuted out of the aircraft while holding the ransom money. He was later apprehended and executed. It resulted in one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in the history of the United States, despite the fact that a large manhunt was conducted, but the hijacker was never identified or arrested. The individual went under the alias Dan Cooper, but a reporter made the mistake of pronouncing his name as D.B. Cooper in the ensuing news coverage, which led to the moniker becoming widely known. A nondescript man who appeared to be in his mid-40s and about 6 feet tall, 1.83 meters, purchased a ticket for Northwest Orient Airlines Flight 305 for the price of $20 on November 24, 1971, the day before Thanksgiving. The flight was on its way to Seattle. Later on, it was discovered that the name he supplied, Dan Cooper, was not his real name. Soon after the plane left Portland, he gave a message to a flight attendant in which he asserted that he was carrying a bomb in the briefcase he was carrying with him. After that, he went on to open the attaché case, which revealed a number of wires, several red sticks, and a battery within. Cooper ordered that he be given four parachutes in addition to $200,000 in $20 bills, which would be equivalent to approximately $1.2 million in the early 21st century. When the authorities presented him with the money and the parachutes, Cooper let go of the 36 passengers after the plane had landed in Seattle. However, he made the flight attendant, two pilots, and the flight engineer stay on the aircraft against their will. After they had finished refueling, he gave the order for them to fly to Mexico City. The pilot followed his directions, and the aeroplane maintained a speed of less than 200 knots while flying at an altitude of less than 10,000 feet. It was around 8 p.m. when Cooper lowered the rear stairs, jumped, and then landed somewhere between Seattle and Reno, Nevada, which is generally thought to be near Ariel, Washington. After that, he vanished completely. The FBI began what would become known as the Norjack Investigation, which would become one of the longest and most extensive investigations in its history, Northwest hijacking. It was initially believed by the agency that Cooper knew both planes and the area, and it was speculated that he served in the military, possibly as a paratrooper. It was later determined, however, that Cooper was not an experienced skydiver because the jump was too dangerous, and he failed to notice that his reserve parachute was sewn shut for use in training. According to the agency's report, in the first five years it investigated over 800 potential suspects, almost all of them were ruled out. Because of the DNA that was subsequently extracted from the tie that Cooper removed before jumping, it was possible to eliminate some of the candidates. Richard Floyd McCoy, who was arrested for a crime that was quite similar to the one he was suspected of, was one of the major suspects. However, we were able to rule him out as a suspect in part because he did not fit the descriptions that were offered by two of the flight attendants. While serving his term, McCoy fabricated a gun and used it to escape from jail. He was later shot and killed by law enforcement officers during a gun battle. Many people believe that Cooper, who was dressed professionally and was wearing a trench coat, loafers, and a business suit, did not make it. At that altitude, the winds were above 200 miles, 322 kilometers per hour, and the man who was using the parachute was unable to guide it in any direction. In addition to this, he would have landed in a difficult region that was covered in dense vegetation. In 1980, a young kid discovered a decaying parcel that contained $5,800, providing detectives with a break after years of following leads that led nowhere. It was buried along the Columbia River, which is north of Portland and around 20 miles, 32 kilometers, away from Ariel. The serial numbers on the money, which was all in the denomination of $20, were identical to those on the ransom. Despite this, the exhaustive search that was conducted turned up no additional information. In spite of the fact that the FBI continued to receive tips, the investigation was officially halted in 2016, with the agency citing the fact that its resources could be put to better use on other investigations. The unresolved mystery captivated the nation, and D.B. Cooper rose to the status of a folk hero, serving as the impetus for a great number of songs, novels, and films. Cooper was infamously referred to by Himmelsbach as a dirty sleazy crook, 
yet his daring and unconventional crime created a cult following that was represented in song, film, and literature. The phrase D.B. Cooper, where are you, was printed on t-shirts that were sold in novelty stores. Promotions and sales of tourist memorabilia centered around Cooper are regularly held in restaurants and bowling alleys around the Pacific Northwest. Since 1974, the Ariel General Store and Tavern has celebrated Cooper Day every November, with the exception of 2015, which was the year that Donna Elliott, the store's owner, passed away. In 2015, the celebration was not held. As a result of several copycat hijackings in 1972, the FAA mandated that the outside of every Boeing 727 aeroplanes be outfitted with a spring-loaded mechanism that was eventually given the name Cooper Vane. This device prevents the aft air stair from lowering while the aircraft is in motion. The implement is made up of a blade made of aluminium that is flat and positioned on a pivot. The center of the blade is where the pivot is located. The vane is attached to the leading edge of the blade just in front of the pivot, and it projects outward in the direction opposite of the fuselage. The blade and the long edge of the vane are at right angles to one another. When the aircraft is in the air, the resistance offered by the spring is overcome by the force of the air pushing on the vane. This causes the vane and blade to spin around the pivot point, bringing the vane into alignment with the direction of the airflow. This physically prevents the air stair from opening by positioning a piece of the blade that is located behind the pivot so that it covers the leading edge of the air stair. When the aeroplane is resting on the ground and the power of the spring is higher than the force of the airflow on the vane, the spring pivots the blade away from the edge of the air stair and turns the vane so that it is perpendicular to the airflow. Because of this, the ground-level air stair can continue to function normally. It is not possible to override the automatic operation of the vane from within the aircraft where it is located. The incident that led to the hijacking was directly responsible for the requirement that peepholes be installed in all cockpit doors. These peepholes give the crew of the cockpit the ability to view passengers without having to open the door. The Cooper hijacking was the event that signaled the beginning of the end for unrestricted and unchecked travel on commercial airlines. In spite of the fact that the Federal Sky Marshal program had been established the year before, there were still 31 aircraft hijackings that took place in American airspace in 1972. Nineteen of these hijackings were carried out with the intention of demanding ransom payments. The hostage-takers sought parachutes in 15 of the extortion incidents that were investigated. The FAA started making it mandatory for airlines to inspect all passengers and their belongings from the beginning of 1973. In the midst of multiple lawsuits alleging that such searches violated the Fourth Amendment's protections against unlawful search and seizure, federal courts ruled that such searches were permissible when applied universally and when limited to searches for weapons and explosives. This decision came in response to allegations that such searches violated the Fourth Amendment. Only two people attempted to hijack airplanes in 1973, and both of them were patients in mental hospitals. One of the hijackers, Samuel Bike, planned to intentionally fly the plane into the White House in order to assassinate President Nixon. Cooper has made an appearance in the plots of several different television series, including Prison Break, The Blacklist, News Radio, Leverage, Journeyman, Renegade, Num 3RS, 30 Rock, Drunk History, and Loki. He has also appeared in the film The Pursuit of D. B. A. Cooper, 1981, the film Without a Paddle, 2004, and a book titled The Vesuvius Prophecy, which is based on the 4400 TV series. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.